Matt Reeves' The Batman is, in my opinion, yet another masterpiece in the comic book genre when it comes to this titular character, and it proves yet again that the Dark Knight can be taken in different directions and made to work well for different times. And while the Batman speaks to certain things in the real world today, what makes this one of the best adaptations is how it completely understands the spirit of what Batman should be from a character perspective, a genre perspective, a storytelling perspective, and a filmmaking one too. In this video, I'm going to be listing all the reasons why I think that the Batman is the ultimate Batman film, a take on the character for our times that stays true to who Batman is, especially when we consider his arc in this film and going forward in future movies. Before I get into it though, if you want to keep up to date on any of my future content surrounding the Batman, then don't forget to support this video by giving it a like rating, subscribing to the channel, and turning on your notifications. Also, feel free to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, and Instagram at Cortex Videos, which is all linked in the description below. But without further ado, let's dive into my video essay on why I believe the Batman is the perfect Batman film. So I have many memorable experiences with Batman from a theatrical perspective. Right from those Tim Burton films with Michael Keaton, I really understood the caped crusader. His persona, his darkness, and what it means to be a vigilante who dresses up as a bat and decides to take the law into his hands in the aim to do some good. The Burton films were the gothic, darker blockbusters that alongside that of Joel Schumacher's sillier films still possessed the entertaining elements in the way that other action and adventure films of that time were. Then Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight trilogy took the character and Gotham in a more realistic direction, giving us a reflection of terrorism in a post-9-11 world. It was the idea of conquering fear and becoming a symbol for hope that people could strive towards in times of need. The Snyder films then portrayed Ben Affleck's Batman in a greater fantasy world where superheroes could come and save us, quite appropriate for the current focus of comic book films. But it also took things a step further, interrogating the idea behind how superheroes are looked at in the modern world, and how they can even go down the wrong path in certain moments. This is, of course, before an eventual redemption, which we see in the Snyder Cut with the example of Batman. And while The Dark Knight is still my personal favourite film that so happens to have Batman and his world on screen, whether that be because of its powerful narrative, themes, performances, or Nolan's jaw-dropping filmmaking, I think Matt Reeves' The Batman may be the best film about Batman to date. In my opinion, this is through how the filmmaker explored the character and portrayed what it means to be that person, even if he's not all there yet. It's the idea of a process that Bruce has to go through, and the closing moments of this film are crucial when it comes to exploring the idea of Batman being that hero that Gotham needs. It's important that we analyse that a bit more from the beginning and really understand the whole process so that we can dissect how this Batman is one of the truest we've seen of the vigilante when discussing his roots. And it all starts in a very different place to what we traditionally expect. The Batman is a character who, yes, lost his parents as a child and then has to deal with that loss in an unhealthy way that could actually help society. This is the universal story we all know of. But then there is the greyer side to this too, and I think the Batman tackles it in the best way any Batman film has. We get a person who uses their money to help fix the issues in society. Filmmaking or storytelling on a big scale is often at its best when it uses its art for us to relate to the anger, frustration, and sadness we feel right now. When that grows in our minds, we look to stories and fiction to watch a character like Batman do the things we wish we could. And Matt Reeves introduces his Batman film with someone who is compelled to take down criminals. 
Wars. He doesn't have a choice, and we realise that right from one of the opening scenes when Robert Pattinson's Crusader beats the living hell out of criminals with no regrets. He's addicted to being a vigilante because of the trauma he felt growing up without truly understanding what he could become if he goes too deep. He is hell-bent on living in those shoes and finding vengeance for the past. Even the one man he saves looks at him as a horror figure pleading to not be hurt. It's a very different start to a Batman film, one that of course introduces the mysterious threat in the Riddler, but also a Batman that is not truly the Batman we know yet. He's finding his mental footing, and that allows for a story of growth and deep exploration in the hands of a filmmaker who is fully story and character focused. And what follows is exactly that, allowing him to grow into the hero we know. From the early moments, we get a vigilante who is still looked at with suspicion, and Reeves never forgets that he is a deranged character that would be viewed this way in his early years. Using the foundation of year two, this allowed for a showcase of the true origins in Detective Comics, one which hadn't been fully realised on the big screen before. We may have briefly seen Batman use his detective skills in other films, but not to the extent of it being linked to the type of threat he's trying to defeat here. That's at least until he understands the main motivation behind Paul Dano's The Riddler. The Batman isn't your traditional superhero movie because it's one part a captivating noir and in another a story that reaches into Batman's origins and understands the comic icon it's portraying on screen. There's of course plenty of action in the film too, which we'd expect from a Batman film, but it's the mystery surrounding the truth and corruption in Gotham that makes Batman all the more interesting here. And this all stems from the way the filmmaker connects us to and presents Gotham City in relation to the central characters in the story. Like I was touching on in my masterpiece video the other week, the Batman's take on Gotham is quite reflective of the kind of city we saw in Batman the Animated Series, presenting all the darkness, shadows, rain and gothic architecture that you'd want to see in a live action film. It puts the goth back in Gotham, and while the city still feels modern enough to relate to our own world, the crime, gangsters and corruption make it all the more exaggerated in a way that makes us feel like we are in that city from the comics. The corruption is deep rooted across decades, connects to the powerful families that built and control its infrastructure, and now the new generation of players like Bruce, Selina and Edward, having been deeply affected by this system, find out just how deep it goes. The poorest in Gotham have little opportunity because they are seemingly stuck in this system that has been controlled by Carmine Falcone throughout his time in power. Batman and the Riddler are opposing examples of orphans within this corrupt system, and it's one of the primary reasons behind why they are the people they are today. Both vigilantes lost people close to them and haven't been left in the best place psychologically. Riddler of course feels this to a greater extreme, but Bruce still needed the events of this film to be given the chance to become something more. And yes, it's the Gotham that Matt puts on screen that feels like the ever-present horror figure behind all of this. He combined many of the world's modern cities, whether it be Chicago, New York or Liverpool, to bring us visual architecture that would really feel and look seedy. Like something we saw in 2019's Joker, but thrusted into today's landscape a bit further. The characters, half grounded and half comic inspired, only echo those surroundings, making it feel half fictional and half realistically lived in. The director and his co-writer Peter Craig managed to weave suspense in with characters we know from the world of Gotham and make them all feel like a complete unit. It would have been easy for a character like Carmine Falcone to feel like someone introduced for just the name recognition, but no, he's made important to the narrative and Bruce's overall story. And then the Riddler is really the character that right from the beginning allows this kind of effect to stimulate on screen. 
He's potentially the scariest villain we've seen in a live action Batman film, and as I was touching on before, he's someone who had it rough as a child, but one who let that destroy him in a very different way than Bruce Wayne. He's a sort of incel, not your traditional comic book villain who would in this case just be underlining riddles and doing the sillier kinds of things. No, this is more of the Joker level villainy at its very darkest. Yes, his riddles and intelligence are a centre part of his character and persona, but primarily he embodies the real terror of someone you might not have noticed, eventually coming back against a city in the most obscure way and eventually destroying it. It's the kind of person you might have met but never really knew, taking anger and revenge at something that brought them down previously. It's someone who could totally appear in the real world today, and some of the things he eventually does makes him all the more terrifying for it. He's definitely the most chilling villain I've seen in a comic book film, and that perfectly fits the Batman-centric world Matt Reeves has crafted for the big screen. But primarily, his character elevates our connection to this story about broken individuals in the world of Gotham, and it provides a relation, yet eventually dissociation, with the morals of Bruce Wayne and Batman. Bruce is broken like Edward, but deep down, he truly wants to help Gotham be a better place, even after everything he finds out about his father and the core of the city, whereas the Riddler wants to see the whole thing burned down. And that's where they part ways. It made for a film that is one part thrilling in all the Batman ways we expect, but then also quite emotional and mysterious when it comes to the integral events and reveals at play. And coming to what kind of Batman film we got, I think one of the main reasons this film resonated with me so much comes in the way Matt Reeves and his team balance the film they made. This could have turned out as either just a comic booky Batman film, or it could have gone too far in the opposite direction, becoming a full-on noir with the Batman element stripped back too far. It could have been too out there to the point where the true essence of Batman is lost within that. But no, the filmmaker went for something quite balanced, in which we got a movie that was a detective noir film dripping in everything Batman. When it comes to making a film on this character, you have to explore the true essence of that, and we get this through the central exploration of what makes Bruce Wayne tick. We don't see the death of the Waynes again this time, as that has been done well in previous adaptations, but instead, the plot becomes character focused once Bruce's family history is brought to the light. His mentality is tested when he finds out the things about his father, and the connections to the corrupt of Gotham makes it all the more intriguing. They sustained the emotional resonance that Batman is all about through the death of his parents without needing to give us the same scene all over again. The Year 2 perspective allows this to happen, and this applies to almost everything, whether it be his mental frame, the suit, the Batmobile he drives, or the fact that his limited experience experience causes him to be a man of vengeance for most of the runtime. And in fact, it's the detective side to this film that really helps to drive it in all the right directions. It's a film very much placing its two feet within noir sensibilities, and for a majority of the elongated scenes of Pattinson in costume, he's there on detective duty, side by side with Gordon, determined to solve every clue the Riddler leaves him. For once, it felt like I was watching a detective in this take on Bruce Wayne. It wasn't just a reminder that he he's supposed to be good at solving things, or that Alfred isn't doing the heavy lifting, it was Bruce in the thick of it, figuring stuff out and focusing on trying to save Gotham. It was utterly compelling in that regard, watching the foundations of this hero unfold, all while he's trying to battle the intelligence of the villain. To make it clear, while I still consider Christopher Nolan's The Dark Knight as my favourite film on Batman, and my favourite comic book related film of all time, I think Matt Reeves' The Batman is the best Batman film to date. It understands Batman to the very core, and shows us a story of a broken vigilante becoming the patched up, yet not all there hero we know. His heroic acts at the end of this film speak to the heart of what Batman is trying to do, and that is to rebuild a broken city, even if he fails in trying. 
Escalation always takes shape in Gotham, but that shouldn't break the spirit of Batman completely. And the mesh of a detective film with a truly Batman-centric one only feels completely right. It helps us to feel more emotionally connected to the protagonist through all the mystery he struggles to uncover, which of course seemingly aims back in on his own legacy, and then even goes beyond that to give us the sense of the saviour he could later be. Moving on, the filmmaking is also a key facet of the way Matt Reeves has built his Batman world. The cinematography by Greg Fraser and the score by Michael Giacchino are two key components presenting a gnarly yet quite intimate experience for the audience. Fraser's cinematography includes shots that would approach using natural light and applying materials to capture a sense of authenticity. For instance, in the Batmobile chase scene, they used rain flaps on the cameras to allow water to be present on the lenses so that this individual moment would include all the grit and horror that a scene of Batman ruthlessly chasing down Penguin should have. It felt visceral, moody, and quintessentially Batman. And when looking at the rest of the film, Greg Fraser also applied a similar method to what he did on Dune's cinematography, shooting footage on digital, reversing that to film stock, and then eventually bringing it back to digital to give the shots more of a gritty filmic edge. It didn't feel flat like a lot of digital images do in today's comic book universe films, and it was only aided by the fact that they set out to shoot a lot of this in camera, only using visual effects when absolutely necessary. It helps to capture the sense that Batman is truly just a man without the need of superpowers. And while it's not Nolan level grounded, the approach of Reeves in bringing a balanced Batman film makes the filming style fitting for this particular take. Michael Giacchino's score also elevates that tone too, feeling quintessentially like Batman, Riddler, and Catwoman in all of their presented themes. But he goes even further to make them quite unique too. Catwoman's theme feels mysterious and jazzy, Batman's theme is emotional yet powerfully ascending, and Riddler's track again brings the emotion, but then also the terrifyingly weird ambience that was needed too. It's the attention to detail in all of this that makes a film better suited to last in comparison to the average comic book fare, yet all at the same time completely ooze what Batman is supposed to be. With every new iteration, there's the opportunity to capture the spirit of Batman and a Batman film, yet bring that with a unique flavour that we haven't seen before. And in my opinion, Reeves fully achieved that. And this overall makes me excited to see the future of this character on the big screen. I want to see this version of Bruce Wayne, who has reached a point of rebuilding if you like, be challenged more and more and broke down in different ways as we go forward, allowing him to fully become that hero which the ending of this first film signals. The whole world of Gotham can be opened up even more so, with the true feeling of the rogues gallery about to arrive. We've got the Arkham Asylum and Penguin HBO shows coming, which will surely extend that, but even with the next movies in this particular trilogy, I expect a deeper dive in ways the average fan wouldn't expect. Villains like Hush and The Court of Owls provide storylines that can take what we learnt about Bruce in this movie even further than ever before, and still connect to everything with his parents and the corruption of Gotham that Riddler has already exposed. Matt Reeves can really build out a whole universe, yet do so in unique separated stories that can apply to many different genres of film. Just like how Christopher Nolan gave us an origin tale, a crime thriller, and an epic war conclusion in his trilogy, Reeves can go beyond the detective noir he's crafted with the Batman and bring in genres we didn't expect. Of course, the detective aspect is something that I think will remain in Reeves' trilogy, given how Batman in this film was that detective version a lot of us love from the comics, but there's still the huge opportunity to go beyond that. It's a version that gives us that true essence of what DC or Detective Comics is, and hopefully this sparks a bright future ahead for this version of the Caped Crusader. I think it looks bright, and I can only expect more unique films that retain what made this one, in my opinion, a perfect Batman film.
But that was my video discussing why I believe Matt Reeves The Batman is the ultimate Batman film. In my opinion, The Batman is a film that speaks to our times, a reflection of our world just like the other iterations that came before. Matt Reeves' film speaks to the terror we are all feeling right now, giving us a gritty detective noir that is both thought-provoking and relieving by the final moments when looking at Batman himself. And looking in, it may not be a version of the character we needed, but it's a traumatised individual stepping up and willing to help the powerless in whatever way he can. The Batman is a Batman for the times in that regard, giving us one that is both relatable in his emotional extremes, but then also in line with what Batman was in the comic books. That's what makes this character everlasting. Every director puts their stamp on him, puts that in a different genre of film, and then makes the character relatable to the world we live in today, whether that be narratively, aesthetically, or thematically. Reeves did that all while capturing the true essence of Batman, his origins, and his world on screen. I can't wait to see what Reeves does with the potential sequel and beyond, alongside how this first film holds up over time as we revisit it in the years to come. We will soon find out, but to me, it's a pretty perfect start to a new trilogy, one that can only get better if everyone involved continues this level of filmmaking. But let me know down below in the comment section what you thought of my analysis, alongside what your overall thoughts are towards the Batman. For much more videos on Matt Reeves' The Batman, then subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Also, if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like rating and follow me on social media via the links in the description. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've been Cortex, and as always, make some noise.